Money Matters on FOSS 107 with Hinkley and Rugby Building Society. And it's a very good morning to uh, Colin Fife from Hinkley and Rugby Building Society. Join me on Money Matters this morning. Good morning, Colin. Good morning, Mark. So then, uh, Colin, got a really interesting question to start you off uh, this morning. Now, we've spoke about this in the past, and as we um, know, you especially, the housing market is uh, pretty much red hot at the moment, isn't it? And uh, the question is here, how can the government control housing inflation and general inflation without putting up interest rates? Very, very good question. There's been a lot of reports you'll have seen about inflation is rising. Yeah. Now, um, interest rates, I would be very, very surprised if the Bank of England put them up by a significant amount. They, they absolutely understand the impact that could have. The other way, and uh, particularly in the housing market, is supply and demand. One of the reasons that there is a, a rising price is there is such a demand for certain types of house. Um, I think the, the other aspect that has triggered a hot housing market is the stamp duty stamp duty considerations that the government have given people the chance to pay less stamp duty and that that ends on the 30th of june so in theory that that should calm it down building more houses should calm it down but interest rates rises could happen but i think it'll be slow and steady so, I mean, we spoke about this uh, some um, weeks and months ago. I mean, are, are people like yourselves and, and indeed the government looking at changing the way that maybe we construct houses? Yes. Um, so that is a, is, a, is a really valid point at the moment because there's at least two organisations who are building houses inside a factory environment. They're not going back to the type of prefabs that you and I maybe remember. I don't remember them, Colin. Oh, come on. <laughs> and um, <I> do actually. <laughs> they're not. They're not going back to that. They are really well-built, good houses that don't have the rain falling on them when they don't have a roof over their head, get into the bricks, etc. And the principle being find the site get the sort of foundations in place, build the house indoors, where you, in theory you can build 24 seven, yeah. and then transport it and fix it onto the foundations. Is that particular uh, method of building supposed to be cheaper? Is that is that gonna hopefully make housing more affordable? Yeah, cheaper, quicker. Yeah, yeah. Which brings me on uh, to another question, actually. Uh, me and my partner prefer older uh, houses with more character. So why are most of the best deals uh, on uh, new houses? Well, I'll tell you one of the reasons for that, Mark, is that um, with climate change right. and therefore you, I and everybody else, if we have a, a, a housing energy performance rating um, of lower than C, so D, E, F, G, we will have to do some work on our property to make sure that it comes up to the relevant standards. And therefore, there are risks at the moment that some of the oldest properties may not be able to be retrofitted in a way that they will be to that certain energy performance standard. Right. And, and therefore, there's, there are some incentives in the market at the moment to buy modern energy efficient, carbon, lower carbon type properties. Uh, just one final question, Colin. Now, this is quite an interesting one, actually. Um, good news, really. A couple of people that have been saving for a deposit for a house and they've got a 10% deposit. The Building Society has offered them a 95% mortgage. Are they better off taking the 95% mortgage and spending the other 10% on doing the house up? Or are they better putting the full 10% deposit down? I'll I'll take off my Scottish hat, Mark. It's it's a you weigh it up. You know, if if you take a ninety five percent mortgage instead of ninety, you pay more interest. You yeah. know, that's that's the reality. You pay more interest, so you've got to weigh that up against if you if you put less money 
down as a deposit and you keep it as a, a little bit of a contingency. You know, you've got this account and a rainy day, you can use that money. You know, I'm a, I'm a bit of a fan of that, to be honest. I yeah. like just, I like to put my head in the pillow at night and know I've got money that if something goes wrong, I can rely on it. And I guess there's a third option. If you put down less of a deposit, you're able to furnish the property to a better you know, standard or quicker. Yeah. I, you've got to weigh those up. And Absolutely. You know, they're all they're all got their pros and cons. Personally speaking, I just I just like to have a little bit of money to decide that if the car breaks down or the boiler breaks down, I know I can get it fixed. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much, Colin, for your time. We've run right out of time and we'll talk to you very soon on Money Matters. See you soon, Mark. Bye bye now.